with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, Victor! Oh, Silver! For years, Red Conway's band of outlaws had terrorized smaller towns and always had managed to escape unscathed. Get up there. Then one day, they rolled into the town of Coldwater and drew up in front of the bank. Conway singled out one of his men, Dave Chester. Dave, you stand guard outside. All right, Red. If anything's wrong, I'll yell. A bunch of men we passed up the street gave us a mighty big look over. Yeah, I saw them. All right, men, let's go inside. The two bank employees were quickly overpowered. The thieves trooped up all the cash inside and were about to enter the vault when ball. Dave Chester shouted a warning from the doorway. Hold them off, Dave. we got to get the cash from the vault. No, no, they're closing in fast. Come on. All right, get to your horses, man. Hold on. Hurry. Hurry. I'll stand them off to your mouth. Red Conway, the outlaw, didn't know the meaning of loyalty. Rather than risk his own freedom, he rode away with his gang with no thought of the wounded man. The thieves rode hard until they reached a place where they would be reasonably secure. Then Red held up his hand to signal a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we, we gave him the slip, boys. Yeah. But it was a close one. Red, we shouldn't have left Dave Chester. He wasn't right to do that. Ah, he right, was right, done right. for. He was done for. Huh? They got him right through the chest. If we'd have helped him, we'd have all been caught. Yeah, yeah. maybe so. Yeah. Yeah, we'd better keep moving. There'll be a posse after us in no time. Yeah. All right, let's divvy up the cash first and then separate. Yeah. Where are we join up right. again, Red? Yeah. Look, remember that old ranch hideout we used near Copper Town a couple of years ago? The place we waited when Dave Chester went to see his wife? Yeah, that's the one. We'll join up there. Red, why are you going up there? To see Dave Chester's widow. She knows too much. Now that Dave's been killed, she might decide to tell the law what she knows. I forgot about her. Pete, you ride with me. All right. Rest of you hombres, wait at the hideout for us. Two 
Two days later, Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, was going by train to Coppertown to meet the masked man in Tahoe. He introduced himself to a boy about two years younger than himself. My name's Dan Reed. What's yours? Uh, Dick Chester. Are you going to Coppertown? Yes, I'm going to join friends camp near there. I'm going to meet my father there. I've been in a boarding school. Oh. They wrote me a letter that he was in Coppertown. I haven't seen him in a couple of months. Hey, you know what he said? A big bank robbery. Want a paper, son? All about the big robbery in cold water? Yes, I'll take one. Here's your money. There you are. Thank you. Read all about the big I'll spread it out so we can both read. Yeah. No. No, I can't be true. What's the matter, Dick? It's a lie. It's not true. Calm down. What's wrong? My dad. And I was... And they killed him. Well, let me see. There's it's right there. One of the escaping bandits was shot and killed by a townsman. He's been identified as Dave Chester, who has been sought by the law. Oh, but Dick, maybe this isn't your father. Might be another man with the same name. Uh, I'm afraid you're wrong, Dick. Oh, Dick, Dick a... never told me where he went or why. A couple of months ago, a man named Conway called for him. They went away together. Golly, that, that's tough. I know how you feel. Have you any other relatives? No. My mother died a long time ago. I have no other relatives. Maybe my friend can help you. Stick with me when we get to Copper Town. No, Dan. Thank you for saying I don't want to cause you any trouble. Oh, it won't be any trouble at all. I don't want anyone to help me. I'll get along. All right, if you want to be stubborn. Copper Town, next stop. All up for Copper Town. Here we are, Dick. Get your duffel. <laughs> Dan Reed left the train with his new friend and looked around for Tonto. When he didn't find the Indian, he persuaded Dick Chester to accompany him to the livery stable to see if Tonto had left a horse. It was just about then when Tonto rode into the Lone Ranger's camp not far from town. Oh, come on, fella. Easy, come. Easy, come. Tonto, where's Dan? Well, me not wait for Dan. Me leave Dan's horse in the livery stable. When Dan not see me, him look there for horse. But why did you but come? here. Here, newspaper. Oh? You tell about bank robbery. Outlaw killed. The Lone Ranger took the newspaper and read the account of the bank robbery in Coldwater and of the death of Dave Chester, the outlaw. Well, they finally killed Dave Chester. That's right. Him, plenty bad outlaw. Me think you won't know about robbery, Pronto. You're right, Toto. Uh, me leave note in Dan's saddlebag. Tell how we find our camp. Well, he should be here soon. I heard the train whistle for Coppertown a few minutes ago. Um, me here, too. Here, Silver. Steady, big fellow, while I saddle you up. Uh, where you go, Kimasabi? Easy now, Silver. Dave Chester was married to a woman who lives only a few miles from here. He deserted her. The lawman could never get information from her about her husband. Easy, Silver, easy. I think she was afraid to talk. Oh. Now that Chester's dead, she may be willing to tell what she knows about his gang. You mean Red Conway gang? Yes, Tonto, I do. Steady, Silver. There, that's tight enough. Easy, big fellow. Wait here in camp for Dan, Toto. Men Silver! Oh, oh, easy, steady now. Don't be alarmed, Mrs. Chester. I'm not... I suppose you're one of Red Conway's back trailers. Oh, you're wrong, Mrs. Chester. See, I'm not an outlaw. Well, then who are you? Why'd you come here? You had an uncle who was a lawman, didn't you? Yes, I did. What about it? Did he ever show you one of these? A bullet? Yes, a silver bullet. Do you ride with an Indian, mister? Yes. His name is Tonto. Let me take a look at your horse. Yeah. He's all white right enough. And his name is Silver. I guess you're not lying. You're the Lone Ranger. Come on inside. Thank you, ma'am. What brings you here? Have you seen this newspaper? No. Read this. Nell Chester read the account of the bank robbery and the death of her husband without emotion. When she had finished, she handed the paper to the masked man. I knew it would happen someday. I'm not surprised. Where will Conway and his gang hide out? I can't answer that for sure. But there are a lot of things I'd like to tell you. Why, why don't you tell me? 
I'm... I'm afraid. Of Conway? Yes. If I talk, he might harm my son. Oh, I... I didn't know you had a son. That's why I haven't helped the law before. See, where is he? I don't know. Dave took Dick away from me five years ago when he joined Red Conway's gang. I haven't seen him since. Dave said if I ever talked to the law, I'd never see Dick again. Won't Dick come here when he learns that your husband has been killed? He doesn't know where I live. I was in Placerville when Dave took him away. If you could only find Dick for me, then I could talk. I'd tell you everything I know about Conway's gang. Mrs. Chester, you may hear from Conway. If you do, get all the information you can from him. He may tell something that will help find Dick. I'll see you again. Adios. Goodbye. Mr. Big Fellow, you The Lone Ranger found Dan Reed waiting in camp with Toto. The boy told about his meeting with young Chester on the train. Why didn't you bring him here, Dan? He wouldn't come with me, sir. He said he'd make his own way in the world without help. Do you know where he went when he arrived in Coppertown? Yes, he went with me to the livery stable and he got a job there. Not much of a job, but at least he won't starve. Well, he was lucky to find work. Well, the stable keeper said he needed a boy. He offered to feed Dick and let him sleep in the stable for just helping out. Then... I want to see him at once. I've got to take him someplace. But he won't go with you, sir. He will when he knows where I'm taking him. I don't understand. Well, I uh, want to take him to his mother. He he told me his mother's dead. No, she's very much alive. I just came from her home. Oh, golly. This will sure be a surprise to him. May I go with you, sir? Uh, Yes, Dan. Dick will trust me when you tell him who I am. Oh, Tonto, I'll write a note explaining things. Please take it to Mrs. Chester while Dad and I go for a son. Dick Chester was alone and proud of the importance of his new position. He felt responsible for all the horses in the stable and for the business of his employer. When he saw two men draw rein, he came from the lighted interior with a friendly smile on his face. Oh, 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 oh steady there. Howdy. Can I help you? Where's the stable man? Oh, he's gone home. He won't be back. I'm in charge for the night. You can feed our horses, but don't unsaddle. We'll be back after we get something to eat. Maybe half an hour. Yeah. Medic, kid. Oh, oh, nothing. Just wait here while I get back. Now, hold on. Where are you going? I'll be right back. Grab him ready noses. Come here, you. <laughs> you come here under the landing, kid. I want to look at you. Uh-huh. I thought your face was familiar. Let me go. You know the kid, Red? He's Dave Chester's boy. Name's Dick. Holy smoke. No wonder he recognized you. And he was going for the law. There's no doubt about that. Get me a rope. Beat and what are you going to do? Going to gag him and tie him. And we'll stuff him into a feed bin where no one will find him. We can come back for him after we've seen the widow. No, no, no. Hurry up, Pete, before someone comes in. Stuff your handkerchief in his mouth. Yeah. There. I get the rope thrown in. Yeah. I'll tie him tight so he can't have kick loose. Uh, that? Yeah. I'll lift a lid on them that big feet then. All right, drop him in there. That'll keep him quiet for a spell. No, now get mounted on him. Mounted? Well, I thought we were going to eat. We're going to see the kid's mother. Right, I'll get him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Range of Adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. The Lone Ranger lost no time in riding to Coppertown with where, where Dick Chester had found work. Oh, 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 his mother is alive. You're going to be more surprised to hear that he will see his mother within the next hour. Inside, Dan Reed and the masked man looked around the lighted people, but saw no sign of Dick Chester. I'll call him. Hey, that room down there in the office? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll look there. Hey, Dick! Here. Well, the cafe for supper. Look on the desk, Dan. Dirty dishes. Someone had supper here. Oh, I remember. The stable man said he was going to bring Dick's supper to him. Maybe he went out on an errand. That's possible. He might be in the hayloft. Hey, Dick, are you up there? See, he might have fallen asleep. I'll run up the ladder. Well, we're sure of one thing, Dan. Dick is not in his livery stable. I wonder where we can find him. You suppose someone else told him about his mother living nearby? I'm going to find out. I'll ride to his mother's house and see if he's there. You wait here in case he returns. Right. And I'll see you later. All right. Oh, oh. Meanwhile, Red and Pete arrived at Nell Chester's home. Oh, 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 oh shut up. I wonder how Nell will act now that her husband's dead. We'll soon find out. You, Red Conway, what do you want? Well, step inside for a few minutes, Nell. Come in, Pete. Close right. the door behind you. What do you want here? Surprised to see us, huh, Nell? No, I'm not surprised. In fact, I was sort of expecting you. Yeah? How come? When I heard about what had happened to Dave, I thought you'd come here to tell me all about it. Who told you about Dave? What? Why, it's in the paper. Who brought you the paper? It couldn't have been the Lone Ranger, could it, now? What? What? I said it couldn't have been the Lone Ranger who told you about Dave, could it? What makes you think he'd come here to tell me? Pete, what are you talking about? Look at this, Red. It's laying here on the table. Let me see that. A bullet. A silver bullet. Only one man uses silver bullets. The Lone Ranger. Where is he now? I don't know. Come here. Let go of me. Speak up. Where is he? Yeah. Oh, I swear. I don't know where he is. Red, someone's riding this way. Hmm? Yeah, you're right. What do we do? Now, I'm going to let you go. Me and Pete will step back in the corner. But we're going to have you covered. And we'll shoot to kill whoever it is. You open that door and invite him inside. I won't do it. I won't help you murder the Lone Ranger. No, so you're expecting him back. You want to see that kid of yours. You do as we say. My son. Dick, where is he? We got him. Now, do you open the door? Yes, I'll... I'll open the door. Come on, Red, let's get out of sight. Yeah, I'm getting behind the door. An Indian. Uh, me got message from mask friend. Hey, let me have it. Quickly. Then go. No, you don't. Indian, get your hand up. Well, why are you drunk on me? Keep your hands high and your mouth shut. Now, come here, Indian. Oh, please don't kill him. Don't. I won't kill him. Not until he tells where we can find the Lone Ranger. Close the door, Pete. He said he had a message, Red. Yeah, I know. I aim to see it, too. Give me that note. Well, what's it say? Holy smoke, listen. I have found your son. I shall bring him to you shortly. Oh. Found the kid. How'd he do that? How'd the masked man find the kid, Injun? Me not talk. You won't talk, eh? Well, you don't have to. Your masked friend said he'll be here pronto. And when he gets here, we'll be waiting for him. Oh, please, he's bringing my boy to me. Don't kill him when he gets here. You can't... Shut up. Pete, yeah? Get a rope. We'll tie and gag these two. Then we'll be ready to deal with a masked man and the kid when they get here. I get a rope from my saddle. You better take the horses out of sight, too. If the Lone Ranger sees him, he might get suspicious. Right. After they had tied and gagged Mrs. Chester and Toto... Red Conway and Pete Davis went outside the house. She came in through the door. He wouldn't come busting in. So we 
would wait for him outside. I'd like to know how he found the kid in the free bin. Yeah. <laughs> so would I. Listen, if someone's coming, get to cover. Oh, oh, easy, Shelly McCall. Don't make a move, mister. Get your hands up. Well, make up your mind. Which order shall I obey? Oh, mine, huh? We'll elevate. You're covered. My hands are up. Now what? We're taking you inside. Open the door, Pete. The Lone Ranger realized he stood in the lamplight coming through the windows while his captors were in darkness. He knew that a move for his guns would mean death. He obeyed their commands. Get in there. One fast move out of you and I'll drill you. That's far enough stuff for you. <laughs> Otto and Mrs. Chester. Yeah, but they're not in a position to help you, mister. Now, you'd better answer a question. What is it? How'd you find that kid in the livery stable feed bin? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You found him. Where is he? Yeah, where is he? I didn't find him. Why, you sent a note by the Indian saying you'd found the kid and that you were bringing him here. You'd better tell us where he is if you know what's good for you. And how you found him in that feed bin. Now, where is he? If I knew, I wouldn't tell you. All right. You just suit yourself. We'll find out. Get his guns, Pete. And take off his mask. Pete and Red concentrated their attention on the masked man and paid little heed to Toto, who lay bound and helpless on the floor nearby. They also failed to catch the significant glances that had passed between the Indian and the Lone Ranger. Toto had slowly drawn his knees upward as if to ease his discomfort. But as Pete advanced to take the Lone Ranger's gun, the Indian's bound feet shot out, tripping the outlaw. Hey, yeah. As Pete sprawled to the floor, the Lone Ranger grabbed for his gun. His first and only shot knocked out the light, plunging the room into darkness. Hold your fire, Pete. We might hear each other. Get the mask, Crater. Find him. The Lone Ranger Hold jerked his fire. knife on his belt and slashed at the rope of bound Toto. And as he did, he whispered to the Indian, Take the knife. Free Mrs. Chester. They're out the rear door. Me do it. Now, Pete, strike a match. Get a light in here so we can find you. Let him drill us, not me. Get a light. I tell you, get a light and watch the door. The Lone Ranger carefully judged the location of Red Conway's voice. He leaped for the outlaw here. Oh, he's got me! He's got me! He's got me! This should hold you! No! I'll help you, boss! I got him! Yes, I got him! I'll kill you, brother! Yeah, you missed! What are you, anyway? In the darkness, Pete's gun blazed several times as he tried to find the masked man with a bullet. He was firing high to avoid hitting Red Conway, whom he knew had fallen to the floor, but the Lone Ranger had dropped low. I'll find you! He was crawling toward the flashes of the heavy six-gun. Now your gun is empty. We can finish it. Let go of me. Yes, sir. Right. Let's go. The Lone Ranger knew that both his adversaries were down, and he hoped both were unconscious. Cautiously, he struck a match and confirmed his judgment. While he watched to make sure neither of the men stirred from the floor, he lighted the lamp on a nearby table. Then Toto came from the rear. You fix some plenty good, Kimasani. We better get ropes on them before they regain consciousness. Oh, you got him. You got Red Conway. Thank goodness for that. Let me tie crooks up now. Mrs. Chester, they said something about your son being in the feed bin at the livery stable. What do they mean by that? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I came with something. Yes? Many horsemen come this way. Yes, I hear them. I'll see who it is. There she is, boys. Hey, lady. Red Conway there. Hey, look, Jim. There's Red on the floor. It's right. the rest of the game. All of them. Come on, boys. Something's wrong in there. Right. There's a the masked man. Get back, Mrs. Chester. I'll bar this door. Hello. Fasten the back door. I'll lead to it. Open that door. Open it up. Let us in there. They'll break the door down. Get over in the corner out of the line of fire. Let me open this door with the best it is. Try it. There'll be bullets coming your way. Surround the house, boys. I'm passing the boys for a minute. They're going to surround the house. They'll be able to fire at us through the window. We'll put out the light now. Gunfire broke off suddenly. It came first from a distance, then close at hand, and it was accompanied by excited cries of surprise. The Lone Ranger hurried to a window and saw that the outlaws were firing on a band of approaching horsemen. What is it? What is that gunfire mean? I think we have help. Let me see. Who, who comes to help? Oh, well, that's the sheriff in the lead. Toto, that white horse. Look, it's Dan Reed. Ah. Come on, we'll open the door and get into this. Laws had turned their backs toward the cabin so they could face the oncoming posse. When they heard the door open, they turned, but the Lone Ranger had his guns in play. 
The rest of you, drop those guns or I'll break some more arms. Caught in the open before they could seek cover and heavily outnumbered, the outlaws realized that their only hope for life lay in surrender. They threw down their guns and the lawmen quickly closed in. While the sheriff's men handcuffed the prisoners, the sheriff followed Dan into the house. He pointed to the masked man and said, Is this your friend, Dan? Yes, sir. It's Sheriff Bentley. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy, Howdy. Dan. Come here, Dick. Oh, my. Oh, Dick. My boy. How did you find him, Dan? He was in the feed bin, bound and gagged. I found him when I opened it to get out for Victor. The boy told Dan who tied him and said the crooks were headed here. Oh. He and Dan came to me, then we all came to the bush. Oh, That's God. Red Conway on the floor, yeah. Sheriff. Oh. He's just regaining consciousness. Well, that just about completes around that. Oh. When those others opened fire on us, I had a hunch they were Conway's gang. I figured they'd come here. You'll take over now, huh, Sheriff? You bet. I come to you boys to meet here and drag out Conway and one of his pairs. All right, come along, Dan. I don't have the horses ready. Adios, Sheriff. Adios to you. Wait. Wait. I owe so much to you. Goodbye, Mrs. Chester. Oh, dear. Right, take my... That man, man. If it hadn't been for him and for his young friend, I... How can we ever repay him? He wouldn't take any kind of pay, Ma. You see, he's the only ranger. I will see Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.